In addition to the push-pull brush, we've got six other really useful paint brushes here. We'll take a look at those. I've got a flat landscape here, and I'll go ahead and just pull that up a little bit, create some curvature on the landscape. And once I've got that, we can take a look at how the Relax tool works, because that's the one you'll probably use the most. And as the name implies, Relax and Soften will soften the curvature under the cursor. And that's available in any brush mode. Let's say I'm in push-pull mode and I create a kind of funky landscape. Sometimes as you work, you'll get issues where the model will self-intersect. Well, you can fix that really easily by activating the Relax tool. Just hold down the Shift key on the keyboard and you can activate that Relax Soften brush at any time. Then we've got Flatten. And as the name implies, it will flatten out the surface under the brush. It just basically averages the locations of all those vertices. So I've created some plateaus there with the flatten tool. Then we got smudge, and that will allow you to push the vertices around on the mesh. It's easier to see if we have edged faces turned on. So I'll hit F4, and then with the smudge brush, we can shift the topology around. And that is going to subtly change the overall shape of the object. Cool, that's the smudge brush. Then we got pinch and spread, and that will move vertices towards or away from the brush. Click here and I can pinch. All right, I can undo that with Control Z. If I want to use the spread option, just hold down the Alt key, and that will push those vertices away from the center of the brush. That's pinch and spread. Control Z to undo that. Exaggerate, as the name implies, will amplify the curvature under the brush. I'll click here and you can see anywhere we had a kind of ridge on our plateau, we're really exaggerating that ridge. And again, we can always switch back to the relax tool with the shift key. We can exaggerate and then unexaggerate with that relax tool. If you want, you can change the strength of the relax tool. That's kind of helpful. If we go over to the relax tool, and reduce its strength down to like 0.1 or something like that, then we will have a much subtler effect as we drag across here, and it won't be quite so extreme. All right, I'll bring that back up to its default of one. Then finally, we come to my favorite, which is the noise brush. And it's easiest to see how that works if we just have a neutral flat landscape. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel all the edits I've made so far. Now we're back to a flat plane. I'll turn the edged faces off so we're not distracted by those. And activate the noise brush. And let's see what it looks like. Drag across the landscape and we've got a kind of jagged mountainous effect going on here. And of course, if we change the strength or offset values, we'll get different results. I could set that offset amount down to like five or something like that. And now we're getting shorter mountains with the same amount of brush stroke. We want to be able to change the pattern or the effect or the look of this. And that's done from the paint options. Click on the paint options pull down and we've got scale and turbulence. Scale is, as the name implies, the size of the noise. If we have a small scale, it's going to be jagged. If we have a large scale, it's going to be soft and rounded. I'm going to increase that scale up. Let's give it a value of 10 and then drag. And you can see here the difference. We've got a scale of four here, a scale of 10 here. Go back into those paint options. Let's make it a scale of 50 to make it a really clear example. So with a scale of 50, we're having a really soft effect. And I can in fact just go back to the neutral landscape with the cancel button and make my brush larger with control shift. And with a really high scale to the noise, I can create kind of a soft flowing hills effect. So that's pretty neat. If I wanted, I can increase the offset up again, maybe give that a value of 20. It's just gonna make it happen more quickly. So that's a high scale to the noise. I go back in here again and then reduce that scale, give it a value of let's say 10 once again, and go back in a second pass, maybe just click a few times here and add a little bit of noisiness to it. Pretty great. And then we've also got the turbulence, and that's the sort of slope of the effect. Let's clear out what we've done. 
and make a couple different strokes here with a scale of, let's say, 20 and a turbulence of 3. Let's see what that gives us. All right. So that's scale of 20, turbulence of 3. Go back in here. Increase that turbulence up. Let's give it a value of 20 also. And with the same number of strokes, what we get is a greater slope to the effect. All right, so just increasing the turbulence is going to make the peaks sharper on our noise effect. All right, so we can use that noise effect in order to build up a random landscape pretty quickly. If we don't like the effect that we get, then we can change the seed. Okay, so let me show you what that looks like. If I cancel that operation, drag across here. That's what it looks like with a default seed or random input of zero. We're getting a couple of peaks over here. All right, kind of hold that in your mind in working memory. I'll cancel that, go over to the paint options and give it a different seed value. Any value will change the effect. So if I set the seed to one, drag across here, now we have a different pattern to the noise. Cool. So that is all about the noise brush and all about the other five brushes here besides push-pull that give you control over your paint deformations.